Apples are one of New Zealand's biggest horticultural sectors. Over the past 25 years, apple exports have tripled to over $300 million per annum, predominantly to premium markets such as Europe and the UK, which have strict phytosanitary requirements. Jim Walker, a plant pathologist at Plant and Food Research, has been involved in pest and disease management in the New Zealand apple industry for over 30 years. In the past three years, he's been instrumental in the development of the Apple Futures program, designed to reduce chemical residues on New Zealand apples. The Apple uh, Futures program really grew out of a desire on the part of the New Zealand apple growers to be able to produce fruit with the lowest possible residues to try and put their fruit in a premium position uh, in international markets. So really it's all about being cleaner and greener in terms of our production system and uh, really with the expectation that perhaps uh, that adds uh, value to New Zealand product in the marketplace because it will be seen as fruit that is of the highest standard with respect to the lowest possible residues. The, the key market uh, for the Apple Futures program, the whole market that it was oriented and developed towards was the European uh, and British uh, markets. So really there's an acute awareness I guess in the supermarket buyer program in Europe of uh, the need for fruit with low pesticide residues and it really grew out of uh, the market drive or the market pull there. European supermarkets in particular are under increasing demand from their consumers to deliver good quality produce with no detectable residues. Peter Bevan, Chief Executive of Pitfruit New Zealand, explains how this has impacted the produce supply chain. Well, Apple Futures is an important program for the industry simply because many of our customers in places like Europe and North America are demanding safer and safer products from us, which means lower residue. And as a consequence, Lidl uh, started uh, telling its, uh, its suppliers that it needed to have fruit that was at 30% of German uh, maximum residue levels before they would accept it into their stores. And I think that's probably still the benchmark, it's still the lowest um, residue requirement. The Apple Futures program was introduced in 2007 and was developed to help New Zealand apple growers meet the high demands of premium markets. The program utilises scientific knowledge and a variety of methods to ensure chemical residues at harvest are low. Uh, the major features of the Apple Futures program are, are really uh, all about positioning of products in the program. So uh, using perhaps the most efficacious uh, and longest acting products in the early part of the season and uh, then slowly uh, are migrating uh, the whole program uh, towards uh, products that are either biological when I say biological, that naturally occurring uh, insect viruses are an important part of the program. They have no residues, they have no profile for residues. Uh, so using uh, biologicals in the latter part of the season and the whole process of pest management underpinned by mating disruption, which is using uh, insect sex pheromones uh, to provide the basis for pest management and pest suppression. So the hard hit early, followed by the soft touch late, underpinned by mating disruption, is for the Apple Futures program perhaps the key uh, to how we put the program together to produce fruit with the lowest possible uh, residue profile. Around 65% of New Zealand apples are now produced under the Apple Futures program. Leon Stallard, a grower in the Hawke's Bay region, has been involved since the beginning. I started off through Jim Walker, through um, the IFP program, early season IFP, um, when that was first introduced back in the mid-90s. And from then it's basically developed. And then when Apple Futures was launched, I said, yep, I want to be part of that. I mean, it sounded kind of where I wanted to go with uh, low, you know, only spraying when you needed to spray and reacting only to the environment around you, you know, whether that's pests or whether that's diseases. Years ago, it used to be calendar spraying, you know, it was Monday and we sprayed and that was it. And that's what, we didn't monitor the orchard, we didn't even know what codling moth, moths looked like or leaf roller, and this is going back 
before the, the RFP program, Integrated Fruit Production Program, came into being. Apple Futures has basically made us more aware and trust the chemicals that we use and understand the pathogens and when they, when they occur in the orchard so that we react early on when there's a higher risk and later on when there's a lower risk, we know that we don't need to react, we don't need to spray as such for them. And that gives us the ability to keep into the Apple Futures. So we end up with you know, super low residues. I mean, we've had some residue tests done this year for some of the black spot covers we've put on. The MRL's three parts per million, I'm down to 0.01. One of the biggest barriers to market access is meeting quarantine requirements by ensuring no pests or diseases are present in export shipments. Ensuring this phytosanitary safety while keeping chemical residues low has been a major issue for the Apple Futures program. Balancing uh, the conundrum that, that we have between pest-free and residue-free fruit is always going to be challenging. Uh, the reason is that pest-free, we've got to be, to keep our fruit universally exportable to all of our most quarantine-sensitive markets, uh, as well as needing to manage uh, that side of our production for our, our major European clients. The Apple Futures program uses signals from nature to direct which control methods are used at which times. And missing just one of these signs can have major consequences for a grower. As Apple Futures is really in its third year, we still have some sleepless nights thinking, is this going to work? Because the problem is we can't see until later whether we've done something wrong as such. If we've missed an event, if we've missed a spray event, you think, OK, was it something I needed to react to? Um, and so far we've been okay, we've managed to make the right decisions at the right time. However, the benefits of the program are incredibly positive, not only in the marketplace. Over time, reduced chemical usage has returned the orchard ecosystem to a more natural state. The problem is you walk down the orchard and it's full of cobwebs, and I guess that's great in the, in, the, in the springtime when you go down where there's a little bit of dew on the trees and you can see all the cobwebs through the orchard and there's bird life in the orchard. I mean, they're eating the bugs and the caterpillars that we used to spray against. And just on the ground, I mean, we have quail running around because there's insects in the ground for them to live on and uh, pheasants plus a few rogue rabbits. The pit food industry was keen for consumers to know the benefits of the low residue standards the Apple Futures program brings. This has led to the development of a new marketing program highlighting the benefits of New Zealand apples in premium export markets. We weren't very good at telling the world what good things we were doing and how we were becoming you know, much, much more um, environmentally conscious with our production programs. And I was at some pains when the Apple Futures program got underway with the industry to make sure that we actually supported it in the marketplace and, and told the consumer what we were doing. And the consequence was the development of the 100% pure apples from New Zealand brand, which is now being used quite widely um, on PLUs on the fruit and also in our support materials that we use at retail and, and so forth to differentiate the New Zealand um, producer from others. So the 100% pure brand, if you like, is a um, an acknowledgement in the marketplace of what the Apple Futures programs enabled us to do. But what if the Apple Futures program didn't exist? Would New Zealand apples still hold a premium position in the marketplace? Well, if we didn't have, if we didn't have the Apple Futures program, I think it would have been a real struggle for most of our industry to gain access to the um, European markets, in particular Germany, um, because of the um, residue requirements that they've imposed. So. You know, unless we went back to the old um, use of organophosphates, which just happened to have quite short residue tails, we would not be able to supply and nobody wants to go back to that. By using an understanding of nature combined with scientific knowledge, Apple Futures has reduced the impact from chemical residues on the environment, whilst allowing the New Zealand apple industry to retain its premium position in the market. Apple Futures is the closest that we need to get to organics. Now organics is fine, but there's, there's issues with um, trying to replace a lot of the nutrients we take out of the soil. I mean, I think it's a, a more user-friendly type concept going in the same direction. And Apple Futures, we learned a huge amount from, or are learning a huge amount from organics on how to treat the trees, how to manage them, how to manage insects and pests and diseases. So I mean, it's a really good mix at the moment, a good fit.
As Jim Walker used to tell us all the time, the best thing to leave in the orchard is footprints. You know, you get out and walk and find out what's going on and then only react when you need to.